Thank you, and thanks for this invitation. Uh, it's, uh, of course, a great pleasure, uh, specifically also because we have this uh, relationship since a long time. So here it is, Roboca. Yes, here we are. Um, we, we play with soccer robots since uh, so many years. Actually, this is the first uh, Sony Ibo that we had in our lab. It was in 2000, long ago. I will not, you know everything about RoboCup, so that's it. <laughs> I will not say anything else. However, I mean, in some sense, in this uh, presentation, there is a lot of the RoboCup spirit, like building systems and really testing them on the field. So the, the reason why I gave this title, Artificial Intelligence in Robotic Bodies, is because I really started with the background of the good old-fashioned AI, as they call it, and try to embed some sort of understanding of the world into these systems. And we are making progress on the, in that direction, and we've been experiencing various types of uh, scenarios where this is possible. In particular, it is important to understand that if the robots want, want to play soccer, they have to be autonomous to a large extent. Otherwise, you have, you have to have several people guiding them. So these are the inspiring principles of what we're doing. And here is a little RoboCup success story, which maybe Hiroaki does, does not know. It's about uh, uh, tracking the ball. And we ended up with uh, tracking the boats in Venice. And this is actually operational, so they give tickets to the boats that cannot speed in the Venice Canal. Nowadays, it's still they want to, to create a new version because it's 10 years old, but uh, it is operational. However, besides this, we've been working on several application domains, and I will briefly glance through them and uh, maybe focus on one specifically. So we had this first uh, project on elderly care long ago. Now it looks uh, really old <laughs> in a ways, but uh, we're still working in this direction. And uh, I think that there is a lot to do in terms of, by the way, we have this competition ongoing uh, in the next week, which is called the bots And it's uh, you know, related to the idea that interacting with the grandfather or grandmother may be done through robots that move autonomously following them. Another domain where we've been working, also inspired by the, the connection, is search and rescue. Okay, we, had, uh, we started with the earthquake in Kobe, and uh, we also had uh, Foligno, known to the world because of the earthquake in Umbria in 1997. So there was also a connection with Japan at that time. And of course, in order to do anything useful in, in, uh, in this context, the system has to have a, a, a a knowledgeable model of the world. And then this is the project that I will spend more time on. It's called Rovina, which <laughs> sounds bad in Italian because it sounds destroyed in the name. But in fact, it's about exploration of how to visit uh, or to access archaeological sites. And I will give you, we do, we do this with the robot, and we are able to build a 3D model that can be then used by, for, a, for a virtual visit of the site. This was a European project with several partners, and I will show a little bit more about that. More recently, we've been working on robots that go in shopping malls and interact with users. So we had another European project on this. And in fact, in this context, the connection that was already mentioned by Roberto between the knowledge and whatever uh, numerical method you have in order to learn concepts, I think is extremely important. So in particular, we are working on this notion of semantic map, where the robot not only knows the 3D cloud of the representation of the environment that allows for motion, but it understands the table, what a table is. It can understand uh, spoken language commands and do interact with the, with the user at a very high level. Finally, in terms of domains, seeing this diversity, we also have a recent project in precision agriculture, where the idea is to build a system that can acquire deep knowledge on the field in order to drive the actions of the robot, like, like uh, 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 putting on the field the pesticides exactly where they're needed, as opposed to spreading them wide in many, in many 
um, without any, any understanding of where they're actually needed and therefore damaging the environment and possibly uh, also other resources. Okay, finally, before I move to this uh, uh, um, little, demo, little video with the Rovina project, I also want to mention that uh, our students build their own robot. This is really RoboCup, so they start doing their robots in our artificial intelligence and robotics master course. And this also we, is used in order to foster the creativity of these students that uh, may also need to consider possible applications for their robots. Okay, so this is the robot view, maybe a little bit boring, but you know, worth understanding how difficult, oops. So here you see the, the screen for the user on the right and on the left, you see what the, the information that comes from the camera and the robot autonomously traverses, this is the catacomb of Santa Priscilla in Rome. And I don't know if you have time to go there, but uh, you see here all the technical part, and I think the, the technical insight here is that the, the, the localization and map construction is really done in a difficult environment and with a successful, uh, satisfactory precision. Okay, so now we move on to this, what comes out of this visit. So, do we have audio here? Hail, Wayfarer. Welcome to the catacombs of Priscilla. So here is the person walking in the catacomb and uh, visiting what's been uh, reconstructed through the inspection of the robot. So th you hear the noise of the steps. This is all done with this uh, uh, virtual reality device, which is the, then uh, adjusted in order to allow the visit in this environment, which, as you can see, is not may be so pleasant or easy to access. This area, known as a cubiculum, is a famous site. Today, it would be called the family crypt. It is named the cubiculum of the Palacio. Okay. This is it. Thank you for your attention. Thanks.